My brothers and sisters, I want to de dedicate this to those who don't have children and they are trying to have children from a long, long time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you. May He bless you with the coolness of your eyes. I actually want to reach out to those who don't have children because what they go through, very few people appreciate. Many people, alhamdulillah, they get married and a little while later, the wife is expecting and mashallah, they're excited, bundle of joy. Before you know it, mashallah, they have children. Uh, some decide to delay it slightly, which is not wrong actually. But we're talking about those whom when they would like to have children and unfortunately, they're unable to have these children because the Almighty has not chosen it for them. But the onlooker, and that is you and I, when we ask people, also, when are you having children? Do you know how dangerous that question is? At times, especially when they're trying to have children for many years and you make like it is in their hands to give children. But let's be sensitive. Don't pry into the people's lives and say, when are you having children? Come on, guys. You know, when you don't know the situation, they may not be able to conceive. And uh, we ask Allah to ease uh, the difficulty of those people. And over and above that, we ask Allah to bless them with offspring. Now, we need to understand we get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We definitely do pray for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will keep trying and don't stress about it. When it's right, it will happen. When we stress, we actually make matters worse. So every time, for example, uh, they realize that we haven't conceived, it's actually painful. It's actually very painful. Sometimes it goes to the level of a slight depression. But my sisters, don't allow that to happen to you. Don't allow yourself to get to the point of depression because the Almighty knows why he has delayed it. And he also knows why, if he chose not to give children to you, why he is not going to give those children to you. So. Sometimes he gives only boys and sometimes he gives only girls and sometimes he gives boys and girls meaning male and female children and Sometimes he gives neither male nor female. That is the Almighty. He knows what is best always ask the Almighty to grant you what you wish But understand that whatever he ultimately gives you was the best for you There are people who've had children exactly as they wanted and those children were uh, a means of their uh, sadness at some stage either due to drugs due to crimes due to them dying very brutally in some way at a young age or in front of their parents and so on when the Almighty knows you won't be able to handle all of that he doesn't give them to you in the first place so just be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you want to study the options you may do so so uh, fertility treatment is permissible uh, on condition that it is done as a last resort and on top of that you do have the IVF and so on which has conditions within Islam uh, it needs to be number one a last resort number two is between the husband and wife strictly no third party involved uh, even the growth of that uh, particular baby has to be or the the embryo the fetus has to be within the womb of the mother uh, it cannot be with a third party in Islam. I mean, others are doing this, but I'm talking of the Islamic rulings. So we need to be very careful how we address this matter. But you may try fertility and whatever else. And at a certain point, you will realize that if Allah has not meant it to be, it won't. So don't become too depressed. You might want to study the option of taking care of orphans. Uh, you know, people call it adoption, but it's not absolute adoption. It is partial adoption in the sense that uh, we bring in someone they would know that we are their foster parents which means we're looking after them and they would know that we love them equally and we're going to provide for them as best as we can seeing that they were orphaned or perhaps from a war-torn place or something of that nature sometimes the almighty has chosen you for something else for something higher uh, than what you thought you would have so some people dedicate their lives thereafter to a certain cause some people are able to use that energy, the, the, the resources given to them by the Almighty in a way that would actually uh, you know, be more beneficial to everyone. 
So in this particular case, we need to realize that uh, not only should we be sensitive when we address people who don't have children, but even those who don't have children, let's not become too saddened by the, you know, what is going on, because at the end of the day, part of your Iman is to believe in good and bad fate being from the Almighty and be happy with the decree of the Almighty. And this is, this is a, an extremely important point regarding Iman, regarding the faith that we have. And uh, my brothers and sisters, it's important for us to know that when Allah has not given us one thing, a lot of the times He gives us other things. And if Allah were to give us that, perhaps we may not have had everything else that we do have. So always thank Allah for what He has given you, what He has bestowed upon you. Let's pray for those who don't have children, that Allah bless them with children. Uh, those who do have children and their children are actually engaged in something that might not be best of things. May Allah make it easy for us to take care of our children, to be a guide to them. Uh, it's not easy. Uh, to look after children nowadays, it's very, very challenging. You know, the schools we send our children to, what can happen and cannot happen, only Allah knows. Uh, many get into bad habits because of the company they keep. Uh, many lose their faith sometimes because of the environment they're living in, the pressures that they have. Uh, sometimes we have the issue of materialism that overtakes our own children discipline them, encourage them to look at how other people are living. So my brothers and sisters, we're dedicating this session, as I said, to those who don't have children. And I want to dedicate it also to those who lost their children, because many times we face tests and trials in our lives that we feel like we can't handle. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised us in the Quran, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not burdened a soul beyond its scope. And we also know that, that the greater reward is with the greater test and trial. There is really no test that a person would face that is harder than the loss of their child. And subhanAllah, it starts with pregnancy with our sisters. And that's why Rasulullah in numerous ahadith affirmed that a woman is fi sabirillah. She's in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while she's pregnant, while in her delivery, and also in, in her nifas, in her postnatal period. And in fact, it's been established through the authentic sunan and hadith in Ibn Hibban and Ahmad and other ahadith that if she dies in, in that period at any time, then she dies shahida. She dies a martyr for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because nothing will really push a woman uh, more than that, uh, than those moments when she's carrying that child. But of course, we know that the bond that is created, you know, between the woman and her child is a very strong bond, uh, even during her pregnancy. And then, of course, afterwards, a very strong bond between the baby and the parents. And one of the hardest things is to lose that child. And subhanAllah, we find many ahadith where the Prophet ﷺ offers some sort of comfort. Rasulullah ﷺ said, as for the miscarriage, he said in a hadith in Ibn Hibban, he said that it is more beloved to me to have a miscarried fetus than to prepare horsemen for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he explained in a hadith in Ibn Majah and Ahmad from Abu Musa radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the miscarried fetus will meet its parents on the day of judgment, both of its parents, the father and the mother on the day of judgment and will drag its parents into Al-Jannah even with the umbilical cord, the Prophet ﷺ said. SubhanAllah, in the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, which is narrated in a tirmidhi where Abu Hassan asked Abu Huraira, he said, give me something, you know, I lost my child, give me something that would soothe my heart. And he said that I heard the Prophet ﷺ say that the child would grab onto the parents and, and Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu demonstrated grabbing onto that, to the man's uh, sleeve, would grab onto the parent's arm, to the, to the helm of their sleeve and would pull them into Jannah the way that I am pulling you into Jannah. So this could be a person's ticket to Jannah, obviously because it's such a great trial. And Rasulullah in one hadith, he said that whoever loses three children, you know, has three miscarried fetuses and bears that with patience, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will form a strong fortress for them on the day of judgment. And the Sahaba said, what about two? He said, even two. And they said, what about one? He said, even one, sallallahu alayhi wa Because the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that vast. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surely understands. And there's some really powerful ahadith also that I wanted to share with you. You know, even when that child grows then, and you know, you have, you've developed an attachment to that child. And, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time not to test me with my children. So please don't feel like I'm, I'm uh, belittling uh, your pain. But really, these ahadith are phenomenal. One of them is a hadith of Abu Musa radiallahu ta'ala anhu. That Rasulullah said that when a child of Allah's servant dies, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks the angels. He says to them, have you taken 
into custody, the child of my servant? And the angels say yes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, have you taken the fruit of his heart? I mean, you've taken everything from that servant. I mean, this is really what means everything to him. And the angels say yes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and what did he do? What did my servant do? And they say, Hamadaka was starja. He praised you and he said, Inna lila wa inna ilayhi raji'un. To Allah we belong and to Allah we return. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the angels, then build for my servant a mansion in paradise and name that mansion in paradise the home of praise, the mansion of praise. So dear brother and dear sister, whenever you lose that child uh, that you love so much, if you bear it with patience and you say Alhamdulillah and you say Inna lila wa inna ilayhi raji'un and you demonstrate gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the moments, whatever moments He allowed you to live with that child, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will build for you that mansion in paradise and it is assured and guaranteed with patience as Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrates in Sahih al-Bukhari that Rasulullah said that there is no reward for my servant believer when I take his Safiya, when I take his pure blessing, the apple of his eye, when I take it away from him and he's patient except for Jannah, Jannah is guaranteed for you and remember that on the day of judgment even being dipped in paradise we would be asked if we'd ever seen any misery. And that is a person who had the worst punishment in this life, who lived the hardest life. And he would say no, just after being dipped in Al-Jannah. So it will be worth it in Al-Jannah. And hopefully that child will, will be the cause of you entering into Jannah and will raise you further and further and higher in paradise. As Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said in the hadith of uh, Hasana bint Muawiyah in Abu Dawood, when she asked him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who is in paradise and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said prophets are in paradise martyrs are in paradise infants are in paradise and children are in paradise they are pure they, they didn't have anything on their record and they will inshallah ta'ala they will pull up their parents uh, to the highest level and we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to gather us with our families in the highest level of Jannah al-Firdaus with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his family and his companions and we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala not to test us more than what we can handle we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to forgive us whenever we demonstrate ingratitude or impatience and we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to grant us in this dunya hasana and in the akhirah uh, hasana and to protect us from the fire of hell Allahumma ameen Jazakumullah khairan dear viewers wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh